Well, hey everyone, it's Justin here. Welcome to Made for Mondays. Uh, you know, Mondays don't own you, you own your Mondays. And we're in the midst of a series on emerging leaders. And by emerging, I told you guys before that uh, we see the future, but the future really not being like 2050, but like 2024. And there's a few people that I see that are embodying the future to me. And today we're privileged to meet a really amazing person. You're going to love her. Her name is Danya Conley. And so please help me welcome her to Made for Mondays. Remember, you own your Mondays. Mondays don't own you. So stay tuned as we get a chance chance to talk to Danya Conley. Welcome back to Major Mondays. Glad you guys are here with us. Today, I'm privileged to have a junior at the Howard University. Uh, her name is Danya Conley. I met Danya here. I pastor a church in Vallejo, California. Those of you who are in the Made for Mondays crew know this. And uh, Danya, I met her a while ago and she came in and wanted to film some things. And beyond filming, she really began to tell amazing stories. And so I'm excited to bring her to our crew today. Uh, she's a TV and film major. I have a heart for that. I was a comm major. And she's a TV and film major at Howard. And so I'm excited for her future. I think you guys are going to love her creative juices today. So help me welcome to Made for Mondays and welcome to Made for Mondays, Danya Conley. Hey, Danya. Hey. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Danya, tell us a little bit about you. So like, what is your story? Like, who is Danya? Okay. Um, do you want like a short version, like a long version? Like... Whatever version you want to tell us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... Hi guys, I'm Danya. So um, I grew up in the Bay Area. My parents are from Richmond, but they I grew up in Vallejo. Um, a little bit by myself. I've always been a church kid, always been in the church, served in the church. I was a praise dancer, youth usher. Um, just basically, if you can think about everything like in church, I was probably a part of it. And so, um, of course, going through middle school, high school, I loved dancing. Sorry about the background. <laughs> I'm in the city. But I love dancing. I always loved um, creating different things, like always on the creative side of things and stuff like that. And then once I got to high school, I was like, hmm, maybe I can dabble in, you know, being a physical therapist or like just because, you know, people push you to just figure out what you want to do and stuff like that. And I always thought like being a creative is always a passion and not a career. So I was just like, okay, well, maybe I'll just like go into the medical field like my mom or anything like that. But then um, my mentor asked me, she was like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I really want to be a film director. Like, that's just like my passion and stuff like that. She was like, okay, cool. You can actually make like a living off of it and even a career off of it. So then that's why I really chose Howard University. And so I'm here at Howard as a junior. And even then my freshman and sophomore year, I dabbled in a lot of stuff, whether that be writing for magazines, whether that be alternative spring break for um, underprivileged youth, youth and everything like that, or like even um, just going to different places and being a part of different clubs and stuff like that. Like I've always just wanted to be a part of something to create something for the better of us. And as you mentioned before, like me filming stuff, like even doing a documentary about black voices and black culture and anything like that, like that is my passion and I want to implement it through film. So yeah, that's a little bit about me and like what I'm about. That's awesome. I remember when I was, uh, I went for a, uh, what you call it? When I was, at, I was a sophomore in high school and uh, my alma mater Marquette University, they had a communication school. Um, it was all, and comm was journalism, film, television, all of that. And inside the school was um, this really amazing black student conference that they had and they brought you on campus for a month. You stayed on campus. And I remember people at church, um, older individuals like, yo, you should just go play sports. Don't focus on this. And I loved, I have to find this old picture. It's back when I had hair. So I don't think you recognize me, but I had this old picture. I had a camera and I just, I fell in love with it. So I totally get, I, I, I get the, the like, are you going to make money? You're going to make money. And then you make money. And it's like, oh shoot, we should never doubt you. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. So how, um, well, can you tell us a little bit about like what you're doing now then? So I see like your story. So like, you mentioned the film that you're making, um, the things you're doing, and you mentioned earlier, well, before we started recording about what you're doing with football, like, what are some of the things you're doing now as you continue to evolve your own story? Oh, gosh, I'm doing a lot. <laughs> we can start with the football. So I'm a, I would say like a film operations on that side of football. So, you know, you have social media crew for football just to promote them and you have the people who manage football I'm the person that records the players 
So like if I, um, my job is literally to follow them, my job is like to stay focused, stay everything like that because during games, like during practices, like it matters a lot. It's like the job is like very big. Um, and I'm currently a producer for a film right now. So I'm for one of my classes, film and TV production class, yeah. So it's for a short film that one of my friends was doing, it's called Murphy's Law. So in that I'm doing a production schedule, a production calendar, seeking out um, different places to film, getting everybody like on the team together and their schedules together. And just basically like the management side of film as well. And then I'm also doing my own project uh, that I'm directing which is it's called Just the Two of Us. It's coming out hopefully January. So oh, awesome. I'm directing that. And like I wrote it as well. So I'm working with the team as well and like getting all that together. And my friend's the producer and we're all just, you know, being creatives. And then outside of me um, doing film, I'm a chapel assistant. So I work with like in Howard University's chapel. I help just, um, get everything together for the dean of the chapel and everything like that and like even guest speakers like i'm on that side just to make sure everything's like good so, yeah. awesome how are that's you keeping balance yeah how are you keeping balance and all of that because that's a, that's a lot oh, oh god planner <laughs> <laughs> I, promise you. I, I use i use a um physical planner because if i do it on the computer it's just not going to get done so I actually learned recently that if you write stuff in blue that you remember everything. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm also on the SOC council and I'm the fund researcher. So I also dabble in like my school as well. So yeah, so I write everything that, down that needs to get done, everything that's due, especially because I'm not here just as a leader, but I'm also a student. So I have to write down everything that needs to get done. And I do have a calendar. So I, I write down everything for the month like just so I'm like focused and stuff like that and yeah I check check box and if something doesn't get done that day I move it to the next day or you know I also have people who have who help me well sorry who hold me accountable so yeah. I'll be like yo do you want to go study like yo do you want to do this like I gotta do that and stuff like that so yeah a little planner yeah. is the answer I, I promise you yeah, I'm I'm stealing that, but I did not know that. Uh, that writing things in blue, I knew writing things in red made us scared. So I'm stealing that. Writing things in blue, um, I'm, I got black pens. I'm I'm getting blue ones. Oh my god! It um, works too. I remember. That's awesome. I did not know that. That is something. Learning something new. I'm grateful. Um, no. So, what advice then, Donna? So you got a lot that you are engaging with. You are leading things. You are starting things. I see entrepreneur just like everywhere. And like, you didn't mention the poetry, right? Um, so you got all of that, right? What advice, yes. um, what advice are you giving yourself on a regular basis to stay the course with what's on your plate? Um, I would say I tell myself, one, I tell myself, don't compare yourself to other people because wow. if anybody knows how our culture is honestly like grinding so like you got people who are doing more than you and then you have people who are doing less than you and you just look at yourself and like am i doing enough and so i've been dabbling like in that and just like don't compare yourself like your journey is your journey and like it's okay if you're not doing a lot in the moment because the moment you say oh i just want to be busy everything comes at you at once <laughs> and so you just like enjoy like your journey and then another thing that i tell myself is like take it each day like I always pray for peace. I always pray for patience and just understanding because sometimes I do have a lot and I'm just like, uh, but it's just like taking it one day at a time and looking at one thing at a time is because focusing on something a week from now does not help you because it just causes more stress. So yeah. I tell myself, don't pay yourself and just take it one day at a time. What would you say to someone, Danya, who is also in this college, who's wrestling with like, this comparison culture um that's one thing i'm seeing more and more whether it's like social media whether it's jobs and now even in like you mentioned athletics i just think of the people i know who are playing sports and like nil and how it's like you got certain players making like two million dollars and then other players that are just like 
getting the the what you call it just getting not game checks but just getting the food the per diem to eat right so you got the on the same team right because of popularity how have you fought through the bug getting bit by the comparison bug while being in college I surround myself with people who know who I am and they remind me like Donna like you're amazing like you're doing your best like you're doing so much and it helps because it's a different perspective because if I just go to myself or anything like that and I'm just like oh my gosh like Donna you're good but you know you still wrestle with doubt like I still wrestle with doubt every single day but when I go to somebody else and they tell me like no girl like you got this like you're doing good like everything's all good and stuff like that it's just like okay I believe you because I trust in you I like I know who you are and I know who you are to me so you know why wouldn't I trust what you say so I feel like just having friends surrounding you who want to see you succeed not just for their benefit but just basically off your benefit and people who know who you are and know like what you're about I feel like that helps a lot with comparison because if you go to somebody and like even in college and stuff like there's fake friends there's real friends and there's friends for a reason there's friends for a season so you have to go to the people who are like down for you like maybe that's your mom maybe that's um your cousin or maybe that's just uh, your best friend that you met in college and just go to them and ask them like girl i need help that is wisdom like i want to affirm that like that is wisdom there's fake friends there's real friends there's friends there for a reason and friends there for a season like that is an immense wisdom that um, personally, I'm 35 now. It took me till 34 to learn that. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie. And, and that's just me. And I know that's not, I know there's others that are much older than me that as they listen to this today, like um, the great thing about Made for Monday is just to share with you. And those of you listening, um, we have some people that are running massive companies down to people who were in um, like in high school, right? And so that's information that I know is essential um, because that's, it's amazing how as much as like, even if for me, I'm a person of faith, I'll talk to God about a lot of things. Um, but sometimes that affirmation from the people we see allows us to really know like, okay, God, you heard me. And so I am, I'm, that is, I'm, I want to just affirm that's immense wisdom uh, uh, to, to have that knowledge and to know the discernment to trust people. Um, that's, that's awesome. Um, thank you for that. Um, so let me ask you this too. So Danya, you talked about talking to other people. So if you, in your sanctified imagination, were to show up at Starbucks and uh, you were having a meeting with your 12-year-old self, what would you tell her? Oh my gosh. I would honestly tell her, like, keep going despite um, your doubts and your disbelief. Because I feel like as though if you look in social media and stuff, there's like a way to do things like, oh, if, you know, once you have confidence in yourself and once you believe in yourself, you can do it. And it's just like, sometimes it's just not like that. Like we're all not built like that. And I'm most definitely not built like that. So I would tell myself, tell like myself, yourself, keep going despite the doubt because doubt is temporary. Like it's not forever. And if you get out of your comfort zone and you push yourself to that limit, it will just brush off of you like it was never there. Wow, that's so real. That's so real. Um, do you think your twelve-year-old self would listen? No. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Every person I've asked that to says the same thing. Like, geez, like, like I think about that. Like, because I thought about that, I would. I thought about the things I would tell myself at that age, and then I'm like, I'd also tell myself, like, hey, when you get your first allowance, invest in Apple. And I'm like, I think I still will go buy some te- some Jordans. But I'm like, just really? invest in Apple. Just put hundred dollars in Apple. <laughs> like we'll be good for life. Just one exactly. one stock in Apple. <laughs> if only our twelve year selves would listen. Listen, hmm. dude. If only our fifty year old selves would listen too, right? To ourselves. <laughs> Danya, so you're creative. And so to other creatives on here that want to give up, um, and and I mentioned poetry a second. This is completely off script, but I mentioned poetry. Those of you who don't know, Danya has amazing work in poetry. And um, I, I, I'm going to work with you too, Danya, on getting like some of the stuff published too. But like poetry, she's a creative with TV and film. Um, Danya, there was a time in my life I wanted to give up on being creative. Or there was things around finances, whatever. I stuck with it. I'm curious for you, you mentioned all the things you're doing. 
what would you say to a creative who's listening who wants to give up whether it's people around them finances life whatever what would you say to them to not give up on what they're what's making them drive on the inside um i would tell i would um say like remind them like what their purpose is because i feel like when you're creative you know, um, when you don't have money, when maybe your idea is just like not working out, you're just, you question yourself, you're like, well, why am I doing this in the first place? Like I could easily get my religious license or I could easily just like make money like that. Like I don't really need to do this. And then it's just like, I would ask them like, would you be able to live with yourself knowing that you just don't throw in the towel because of a temporary situation? Because temporary doubt, temporary disbelief, it's all just temporary. And I feel like you need to just hold out a little bit longer and just know like when God affirms your purpose in your life, it will happen. And you just got to believe and have faith in it. Like that's all you really need to do. So yeah, I, like being creative is probably one of the hardest jobs I feel like on earth because there is no right way and there is no wrong way. And your way is your way. So yeah. Wow. Thank you for that. And to all of our creatives listening, um, that's, that's so real. That's, that's, that's so, that's so wise. It's temporary. It's, it's temporary. Um, Danya, thank you so much. Made for Monday's crew in the comments on YouTube and on Spotify and on iTunes. Be sure to shout Danya out as well. Thank you so much to Danya for pouring into us, um, to push us into Monday. So know this as you go into your day, no matter what meetings you have, what you need to complete. And as Danya said earlier, to-do list, write that thing in blue. I'm, I'm going to definitely start doing that. Um, go into your day knowing that you own your Mondays. Mondays don't own you. You own your Mondays. Go win this week. Victory is waiting for you. Thank you again to Danya. We'll see you guys next week as we can continue our series on emerging leaders. Y'all, we have some amazing people that are going to take over 2024. Let's help them in 2023. We'll see you soon.